everybody. This week I am back with one of my favorite style of videos. I have got three show stopping, absolutely incredible, divine, balanced bowl recipes. So for more ideas similar to the recipes that I am about to share with you, I would highly recommend you check out my Buddha Bowl ebook, which is available over on my website, along with all of my other incredible recipe ebooks. My main aim is that you watch this video and that you are full of creative ideas, that you are inspired by all of the colors and all of the flavors that I'm about to share with you. As I always say with this style of video, this is really about just kind of finding freedom in the kitchen and just kind of going with the flow. Feel free to mix and match different elements from different bowls. I would love if you tag me over on Instagram if you try out any of these ideas, if you draw inspiration from any of them. Let me know which bowl you'll be trying out first, which one stands out for you in the comments. I cannot wait any longer. I'm so excited to share these recipes with you. So let's jump straight into the first balance bowl. Let's go. So we have jerk and honey salmon with black rice, which is mixed with a favorite sesame seasoning of mine, which is called furry khaki. We also have a mango and avocado salad. Cannot go wrong. The flavor combinations, the zestiness of this whole bowl, the juiciness of this whole bowl is just unreal. So the ingredients for this magical bowl include salmon fillets. I'm using some wild salmon. And then to season up the salmon, I mentioned we're going to be making jerk and honey salmon. We're going to need some jerk seasoning. So there are options here. You can either make your own homemade jerk seasoning. Props to you if you do that. Or you could take a more simple route by using a dry rub or you could use a jerk paste. It just really depends on <laughs> what you have available. We're also going to be needing some black rice, a little switch up. For anyone who's curious, it has like a deep nutty taste. It does take a little bit more preparation and cooking time, um, but it's absolutely delicious. So for our irresistible avocado and mango salsa, we're going to need a ripe avocado. We are going to need a juicy, juicy mango. And um, we're going to be adding in a little bit of scotch bonnet. This is just going to give it a hit, a little bit of fire that we need, some spring onions, and then of course, just some zesty lime just to tie everything together. So there are many methods of cooking black rice. I prefer to just leave mine to soak overnight. It's easiest for me. And then I just give it a good wash in the morning give it a good wash you want to wash and rinse wash and rinse until the water runs clear you want to add a little bit of sea salt to your rice bring it to a boil reduce the heat and then cover the pot and just let it cook for around 40 minutes it does take a little bit longer but trust me it will be worth it so for our very very saucy jerk and honey salmon we are going to need to season it up so grab a little bowl and place in your jerk seasoning of choice place in some olive oil a little bit of honey and just mix everything well mix it all well so grab your washed and preferably scaled fish I prefer to remove the scales and then yeah season it up so add a little bit of sea salt I also like to add some garlic powder just for some extra seasoning go ahead and drizzle over that jerk seasoning pour it all over make sure everything is well covered it wouldn't be right if I didn't finish it off with a little bit of black pepper and um, yeah and I also squeezed over some lime juice so you have options with this fish if you are prepping the night before for. You can leave it in the fridge to season. Obviously, it's going to be a lot more tasty. If you are short for time and you want to cook it straight away, then it will still be good. Trust me. Visually, you can just see how tasty this is going to be. Time to cook up our salmon. You could definitely cook it in a pan. I just prefer to whack mine in the oven. Wild salmon cooks a lot quicker. It literally takes about six to seven minutes. If you're using a larger piece of salmon, obviously be mindful that the cook time will be a bit longer. Um, so we're gonna move on and prepare our avocado and mango salsa. So you're gonna remove the skin from your mango, peel your mango, and then you are going to chop it into cubes. You're then going to finely chop up your spring onions and then finely, finely chop up your red onion too. This dish definitely needs a little bit of heat and for that I added in a little bit of scotch bonnet. I didn't even add the seeds because the scotch bonnet that I had was spicy. I think I actually added too much in the end. I chopped up my avocado. So into a large mixing bowl, I placed in all of the ingredients except for the avocado, because I'm gonna add that in last. There's a method to how I like to mix things up. Um, so I placed in a little bit of sea salt, some lime juice, um, gave everything a very gentle mix. Then I placed in the avocado and then gave everything one last mix. I also added in a little bit of coriander just because I had some on the side and I mean, coriander is one of my favorite herbs, so why not? I placed in a little bit of black pepper because 
I just felt like it. Absolutely no reason, I just felt like it. So it was time to plate this bowl up. I placed on the black rice. I had a little bit of watercress and cherry tomatoes on the side, that jerk and honey salmon, that avocado and mango salsa. I placed some furry khaki over the black rice. This is like a sesame seed seasoning. Mm. From just looking at this bowl alone, the color profile, the flavor combinations, it's literally feeding me. So you can only imagine how good this bowl tastes and how good this bowl makes you feel. This is honestly, this one is a gem. So moving on to our second balance bowl. Now this one, this one is a vibrant one. So we've got black bean and cumin quinoa, chili butter corn, a cherry tomato salsa, griddled aubergine. Honestly, yeah, this one is packed, packed with flavor. For this divine bowl, we are going to need some corn, which we're gonna make the chili butter corn with. We're gonna make like a, a spicy butter and then griddle the corn, oh, so good. So for our salsa, we are going to need some tomatoes. So you could use regular tomatoes. I prefer to use cherry tomatoes just because they have that added extra sweetness, that, that added edge, which I really, really love. We're also gonna be adding in some red onions and some garlic, which we're gonna roast and then everything's just gonna intensify and they're gonna become sweet and just absolutely delicious. We're gonna be chopping up some coriander and placing that in, lots and lots of lime, some chili of choice. You could use habanero, you could use scotch bonnet, you could use jalapeno. Um, the list is endless of what chilies you could use and incorporate. We're also gonna need a little bit of chipotle paste. For the black bean and quinoa dish, we are going to be needing some quinoa and we're also gonna be using some black beans, which you can use ones that you've cooked from dried or you could use cartoned or tinned, whatever is is, um, best for you. To this dish, we're gonna be adding in some red pepper, some spring onions, and we're gonna make the most, oh my goodness, this dressing, it's so simple, but it's it's so good. If you're familiar with my content, you know I soak absolutely everything, including quinoa. I like to soak it for around two to four hours. Um, I just find that it digests a lot better. It just feels a lot better. So anyways, um, I took my soaked quinoa and then I simply just cooked it with a little bit of sea salt and some water. So we're gonna chop up all of our ingredients, which includes that red pepper. Just chop it very, very finely. We're gonna roughly chop up our coriander and then we're gonna finely chop up our spring onions. So just give them a good chop. So for this really simple cumin dressing, which I just can't get enough of, we are going to add some olive oil into a bowl, followed on by some lime juice, some cumin powder, some sea salt, and a little touch of cayenne pepper. And we're just gonna mix everything until it's well mixed. So into a large mixing bowl, place in your quinoa, your chopped red pepper, the finely chopped coriander, spring onions, your cooked black beans, then go ahead and pour over that cumin dressing, that zesty dressing, that olive oil filled dressing. Just pour it all over and give everything a really, really good mix. If you're like me and you take every opportunity you have to add black pepper, then go in and add a little bit of black pepper. For our fiery cherry tomato salsa, which has hints of chipotle, Oh, we are going to halve our cherry tomatoes, chop them in half. And then we are going to chop up our red onion just into kind of like large wedges. Place the cherry tomatoes and the red onion onto a flat baking tray. Season with some sea salt, drizzle over a little bit of olive oil and then just whack them into a 190 degree Celsius oven for about 20 to 25 minutes. Whilst your tomatoes are roasting away, go ahead and chop up that fresh coriander and then finally chop up that jalapeno. Just being mindful of how many seeds you add. If you like it hot, then yeah, you know what to do. So when you remove your tray from the oven, your cherry tomatoes are gonna be looking something like this. So, so yum, so good. We've just literally turned the flavor intensity up. Everything is just gonna taste sweet and you will be amazed at how simple and how delicious this salsa is. So go ahead and place in your roasted tomatoes and onion, followed on by that chopped jalapeno, some fresh minced garlic, some chipotle paste, a squeeze of lime juice, and just whiz everything very, very gently, like using the pulse option if you have one. So once everything is combined and you are happy, with the consistency, you can then go ahead and fold in that chopped coriander. Yep, there is definitely more. There's definitely more. We haven't finished just yet for this bowl. We're gonna make chili buttered corn. 
my goodness, my goodness, hold me back, seriously. So we're gonna start by peeling our corn, that's if we're using corn in the cob, and then just drizzle a little bit of oil of choice onto it. So we're gonna grab our pan, I'm using my griddle pan, if you have just a regular pan, that will be fine as well. And then we're just gonna kind of keep an eye on it, we're just gonna kind of toss it around for like 10 minutes or so. So whilst your corn is cooking, we are going to prepare the chili butter. So add some room temperature butter to a bowl, followed on by some chopped chili, some chopped spring onion, followed on by chopping up that fresh coriander, more coriander, and um, go ahead and add that in as well. Give it some sea salt and then just give everything a good mix together. So I went and added in a little bit of garlic powder just because I love garlicky, buttery things. So grab that corn, which is going to be looking so good. It's going to be looking so enticing. Um, and then just place it on a chopping board. You can let it cool down for a few minutes and then simply just chop the kernels off the cob. And then you're going to combine the corn and that chili butter. Everything's just going to melt and just mm, fuse together so, so well. The next step is our griddled aubergine. So we're going to place in our aubergine. I like to kind of chop them into wedges. Yeah, so aubergine wedges into a large mixing bowl we are going to place over some sea salt we're going to add in some garlic powder some cumin seeds some smoked paprika and we're going to drizzle over a little bit of olive oil and of course finish with some black pepper make sure everything is covered really really well so grab your griddle pan or your pan of choice and then just cook your aubergine on each side i'd say about two and a half to three minutes on each side this bowl leaves me speechless every time. Everything is just next level and there are so many little intricate layers to this bowl which I literally can't describe. Like you have to go and try this for yourself. I know you are going to love this one. So for the final balance bowl, we're definitely not going to compromise with taste, but I just feel like technique, time-wise, this is probably the most straightforward bowl that I'm sharing with you today. We've got the most delicious lemon, garlic and herb grilled chicken. We're going to make a really fresh, vibrant salad using end of summer produce. We're going to steam some green beans, which I just cannot get enough of. We're also going to whip up a herb packed yogurt. It just completes this bowl. A big component of this bowl is lemon. We're going to use it for the chicken. We're going to use it for the herb yogurt and we're going to throw it in our salads for the herby yogurt i as always love to use coconut yogurt a greek yogurt would work really really well for this then we're going to be using lots of fresh tasting herbs so um, i like to use mint and dill you can work with whatever herbs that you have on hand so for this end of summer season salad, really, really simple. We're gonna be working with cherry tomatoes. I'm gonna to throw in some red pepper, some green pepper, some cucumber, some olives. Kalamata olives are hands down, probably one of my favorite olives ever. And I always have a jar of Kalamata olives. Um, we're also gonna be adding in some red onion. So for this chicken recipe, place your washed chicken into a large bowl. I like to kind of chop my chicken fillets in half. I like them quite fine like flat if that makes sense and then I just season them up so place in some sea salt some garlic powder all of those dried herbs an abundant of dried herbs black pepper I haven't said this for a while but go ahead and give it a splash of tamari chop up all of that garlic like I said we're not going to hold back we're not holding back with garlic lots and lots of garlic I like to grate in a little bit of lemon zest make sure you're using unwaxed lemons drizzle over some olive oil and just give everything a good mix now I did you want to leave this overnight just to season to deepen in flavor and taste but if you're gonna cook it the same day perhaps just leave it in the fridge for like half an hour just so it gets a little bit a little bit more taste go ahead and whip up this herby yogurt um, so grab your yogurt place it into a bowl followed on by all of those fresh chopped herbs so the dill and the mint go ahead and squeeze in some lemon juice give it a little bit of black pepper and some sea salt super super simple set it aside so go ahead and chop up your cucumber i like to just remove the center of the cucumber this is just preference you don't have to do it um but yeah don't waste it just eat it on the spot if you want to chop up your cherry tomatoes finally finally chop up your red onions dice up your green peppers your red peppers whatever peppers you are using add everything to a large mixing bowl placing in your kalamata olives so go ahead and season with some olive oil. Um, I love to put a little bit of dried oregano, some sea salt, and just mix everything well. 
So time to cook the chicken. You're simply just gonna grab your pan of choice, um, heat it on like a medium heat, place in your chicken breast and just make sure your chicken is thoroughly cooked. So once your chicken is cooked, you're gonna cut up your lemon and you're simply just gonna squeeze over that lemon juice just at the final stages of cooking it. For the green beans, I simply put them to steam and then I drizzled over some olive oil and sea salt just to, just to season them a little bit. So yeah, I plated up this vibrant, satiating bowl. I actually love this bowl in my follicular phase. I often talk about how I eat for my cycles over on my Instagram. And yeah, this is just the, an example of a, like a follicular phase meal, which, which I love. The different textures of this bowl, the simplicity of this bowl, the way that all the flavors just sing so harmoniously together. I, yeah, I'm in love. I'm in love with this one. There is a lot to take from this video. Let me know if you try out one element from a bowl let me know tag me over on my instagram if you make a whole bowl i would love to see it either way i just want to see what you recreate with these ideas drop me a comment if you have anything to ask me and i will see you all in my next video very very soon see you bye